Cataracts, what are we looking at here? I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Hi, I'm Raj Binlish from Oakville. And you are a? Ophthalmologist. Oh, thank you so much uh, for coming to talk to us here on Talking with Docs and to clear up some of the fogginess around cataracts. <laughs> thank you, Paul. <laughs> thank you, Brad, for this invitation. So my topic and discussion is uh, talking to you about cataracts. What are cataracts? How do we diagnose cataracts and how do we treat cataracts? So cataracts are a clouding of the natural lens of, of your eye. Uh, it typically happens as we get older. Uh, sometimes it can happen if you had a history of an eye injury, if you've taken oral steroids for underlying health conditions. Uh, sometimes if you're diabetic, you can get a cataract at a bit of a younger age. Um, as time progresses with the cataract, you'll get progressive blurring of your vision. So distance objects won't appear as sharp. Many people describe when they're driving, they have difficulty seeing street signs. Some people also say that oncoming headlights or um, uh, light, street lights at night have rings or halos around them. Some people also have some glare during the day from the bright sunlight. Uh, as, as time goes on, most people end up going to see an optometrist or, or complaining to their family doctor that their vision is getting more blurry. And so then they get uh, an eye examination. And with the eye examination, we check their vision, we check the need for glasses, and we do a slit lamp examination. And a slit lamp exam is our way of uh, looking at the eye. And that's how we usually diagnose a cataract. We can detect that your vision is down and we can see an opacity of the natural lens. Wow, Raj, you covered the whole thing in one sentence. <laughs> I was gonna go for breakfast. Do you mind? Well, no, no yeah. problem, that's as long as it takes us to do the surgery. I love it. it, I love it. So now, when you say as we, as we get older, like what are we talking about? So when you're 30, you're starting to get a cataract, or like average age would average be Average age is usually in the 70s or 80s. Okay. Um, some people in their uh, late 40s, early 50s, typically if there's a genetic component or again, a history of diabetes or, or would your issues. Would your family or your friend or your partner be able to look in your eye and say, hey, something doesn't look quite right, or this is really only a slit exam uh, diagnosis? Yeah, unless the cataract is quite advanced. Uh, it's pretty mean, subtle. It's, it's very subtle. So yeah, you would need a slit lamp exam too. Okay. Now I remember studying this in medical school, but it's a little foggy. Um, the cause, is it just uh, proteins Age. clumping together yeah, in the lens? Uh, during the, as we get older, the, the lens is like an onion. So if you think about when you cut through an onion, it's got multiple layers. So as we get older, the lens adds more and more layers and the more central layers get more compact. And as they get more compact and develop uh, protein buildup, they, they become more cloudy. That's the typical nuclear cataract. There is a posterior subcapsular, which can happen in diabetics, people who take steroids where the back of the lens gets clouded. I see. Okay, so you got a cloudy lens, your vision's getting worse, enough to see a doctor. So when I come and see you, and my family doctor's referred me, I'm like, listen, I don't want surgery. Is there any way I can solve this with, without surgery? Can I go take a cold bath? Can I do a sauna? Can I take some vitamins? So unfortunately, there are not a lot of great medical treatments for cataract. Early on, perhaps just updating your glasses prescription okay. is all that we can do. Uh, some people don't wear glasses and they have to now become a, a, accustomed to wearing glasses. Uh, sometimes changing your glasses can happen very rapidly. You get a new pair and then within six months your vision changes again. Okay. As that happens more rapidly, then the next option would be a surgical removal of the lens. Okay. And the reason to do that is just for your vision. This is not a dangerous pathology. Like if someone no. said, listen, I just am not having surgery, you'd say, okay, unfortunately you'll just progressively lose your vision. Yeah, progressively. Which obviously has consequences. Yeah, it has consequences. Yeah. Uh, greater risk for falls and, and, and injuries. Right. They end up in our office. That's, That's correct. That's don't right. want to do that. Okay, so when they get surgery, what's involved with this surgery if you gave us the three minute version? So, the three minute version surgery is done generally in a hospital, uh, in an outpatient setting. So, it's day surgery. You come in, uh, we bring you into the operating room. Generally, we just numb up the surface of the eye. We give you maybe a little bit of medicine through an intravenous or sublingual prior to the surgery just to settle your nerves. Uh, we make two tiny incisions into the eye, and uh, through that tiny incision, we use ultrasound. It's called phaco emulsification. Ultrasound is a machine that breaks up the lens and removes the contents of the lens at the same time. Through that same tiny incision, we put a new lens into the eye. You go home, you go on some medication after the surgery, and roughly four to six weeks after the surgery, you get an update in your glasses. Most people, within a couple of days after the surgery, their vision uh, returns to normal. Few limitations for the first week, no heavy lifting, no bending. 
What's the deal with medication? Sometimes the optics on big pharma aren't that great. What kind of medications do you need after? Why do you need medications after? So you need some medications to control infection, so an antibiotic. You need mm -hmm. some uh, medication to control inflammation in the eye, and that's usually a steroid eye drop. We now commonly also prescribe a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, like a topical aspirin type medication, to prevent a condition called macular edema. Okay. And how long would that operation take? Just for someone imagining lying on their back and having you over top of them and then cutting their eye, which yeah, they don't feel. Approximately 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it really changed, right? Really in the last changed. 20 years, last it used 20 to be years. a big deal. We used to be a, a much longer procedure. We used to make a very large incision across the top of the eye, deliver the lens as one big piece. Now the incision is about 2.2 to 2.4 millimeters. Very Ooh. small, close wow, system. Tiny. Is that lens good for the rest of your life, typically? It is good for the rest of your life. Uh, we typically rarely ever have to change the lens. It doesn't need to be removed and exchanged or cleaned. It, it's good forever. I heard a cool stat that in terms of uh, lifestyle and satisfaction, uh, cataract surgery uh, is number one like in terms of success and just a... It is. Good we're awesome. two and three, yeah, actually. Yeah. Hip and knee surgery is two and three. Yeah. Yeah. His knee, yeah, I so know we're, hip we're, we're still better than the orthopedic guys for the time <laughs> a being. A little bit. For the time a being. A little bit. But generally now, in the old days, cataract surgery was just meant to remove that cloudy lens and put a new lens into the eye so that you could see better. And generally, you would have to wear glasses 100% of the time after cataract surgery. We're now in a position where you have multiple lens options. And what these lens options do is they correct your vision so you become less dependent on glasses. Uh, we have a toric lens to treat astigmatism. So you have high levels of astigmatism. We can neutralize that. Again, giving you better distance vision without glasses. With the standard monofocal type lenses, which can be government covered, uh, aspheric or toric, you get distance correction, still need to wear reading glasses. Some people wish not to wear glasses after cataract surgery. And in that case, we have what we call multifocal or lifestyle lenses. So they give some level of distance, some level of computer and some level of reading. By giving you these types of options, we can make you more and more spectacle independent, which improves your satisfaction. Wow. Amazing. Literally healing the blind here. That is correct. It's the number one cause of reversible blindness in the world. Love it. Well, thank you so much for clarifying the topic of cataracts for us. <laughs> and uh, we hope you'll come back and talk about some other eye stuff. My pleasure. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.